We want to let players remix anything in Minecraft. And to make that happen, we're bringing add-ons which are coming this fall. This was first announced in 2016, but if you're a console player, this week was the first time you could actually download add-ons to use on any world that you like, and it's as simple as this. There are 15 different add-ons to choose between, although I think most people will gravitate towards the seven which are free, and today I'll be going through each of those to help you decide which one is for me. And we're going to start with the highest rated of the batch, the Sparks Pet Add-on Brackets Light. Let's see what this is all about. Well, my world looks mostly the same after installing it. I don't see all of the pets everywhere. And instead, I just get this brand new guidebook, which will actually tell me, oh, that is so weird. Oh, it, w it physically gets thrown in this case. But there's a guidebook, which I can use to work out how things work. And in this case, it's a real book. So I can get all of these animals, notably guinea pigs, hedgehogs, tortoises, and T-Rexes. You know, I don't know what weird pets they have in the offices over there, but fair enough. And uh, you can tame them using a collar, which is made from four leather. And then we can give them a treat, which is made from a bunch of different food types. And then we can dress them in outfits. And that is the entire point of this one. 4.9 stars, that does get me excited. Let's see if we can't find one of those out in the world. I found one, look at this guy. <laughs> I have just tamed myself a hedgehog. Look at that, that is ridiculous. Well, this, this is silly and I see why this is free, but also I see how people get value from this. If you've been crying out for more dog or more pet, you know, animal variations, having a hedgehog sure is fun. Also, something that you might have noticed if you read the book earlier, is you don't just find them around the world, you also find them from wandering pet traders. So while I run around the world desperately looking for my second pet, let me remind you if you do want to download any of these free mods or add-ons, uh, that you should not do so on a long-term survival world, uh, because there is a risk that one of the add-ons messes with things, and even excluding the risk, it will permanently disable achievements on a world. Make a copy of the world that you want to use, or better yet, you can start one from scratch. This is a way to make sure that you'll always have the pets there from the beginning and you don't have to struggle looking around for a wandering pet trader or a T-Rex like I am. You know, I honestly do wonder, like, should I be worried about the idea of a T-Rex spawning in my world? This is something you should only do on worlds that you're afraid, not afraid of losing because you will have some serious issues. For example, wait, wait, no. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll show you very briefly, but for now, <laughs> look at this. This is silly. This is ridiculous. But yeah, I must, right? Yeah! <laughs> Oh, there's a cat as well. So as you can see, this is its like a Minecraft cat. If it was much more ridiculous, uh, this is the Siamese cat, if I'm not mistaken. But let's be real, I'm here for the T-Rex. Okay, come with me to my base. I think we'll have the ingredients for treats there and maybe even some outfits. I guess we're gonna find out on the crafting table together. But still, come with me, it'll be great. <laughs> a superhero outfit is crafted with four blue wool, two red wool, and two leather. So let's go ahead and let's see what happens when we put the superhero outfit on our T-Rex. Well, I mean, I've got to say, shouldn't be surprised by this one, should I? He's a superhero Rex now. This is, I think, one of the most base level ideas of an add-on. It really won't affect your Minecraft world in any way because the idea of every single add-on that exists so far is unlike the original mentioned add-ons from 2016. It's not to alter the existing behavior, at least not yet. Instead, everything must add on to your Minecraft world. Mojang released a tool for validating add-ons in this way and you cannot touch anything in vanilla. That is not the point of add-ons. And so this is the interesting interesting side effect of that. You won't see dogs and cats be updated, but instead you'll just see T-Rexes being added. And boy are those pets excited with you when you have a treat for them. Oh, wow. He gives you mining and, uh, okay, you get haste and you get a regeneration effect. So there is a real combat effect to this. There is a real reason for this if you're willing to go through the pain of crafting it. Anyway, um, there is uh, there, are, there are more pets that are worth finding and it is a rainy day. So I don't know that we will find them but very fun stuff otherwise, right? So your pets will attack on your behalf and protect you, although not very well against skeletons. And they also come in multiple variants as proven by this black T-Rex, which I believe 
is uh, <laughs> attached to a wandering pet trader who will then give me a Malamute or some armor or indeed some outfits for them. Very, very cute stuff, it has to be said. So Spark's pet add-on is a solid 8 out of 10. Everything it sets out to do, it does wonderfully and it will still surprise you beyond that. Uh, however, if you're not just into a fun, cutesy little cosmetic, if the pets aren't your favorite part of the game, it won't be for you. But if you're the sort of person who's wondering, should I download the pets add-on because I like pets? Yes, 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 you definitely should. Anyway, with that said, before we move into the second add-on, I want to show you one of the weird artifacts that will happen if you choose to remove an add-on after installing it in a world. Minecraft does recommend you don't do that, and if you will anyway, then all of the blocks from that will become update blocks, which might be fun. And uh, as to what happens with uh, items, this is something I don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to craft myself, I'm going to take just all of this leather, and I'm going to turn it into so many colors, just all of the colors in the world, What's going to happen to these as I switch to the next pack? And also, this this guidebook which is on the ground. Well, let's load it up now and find out. This is Hiker's Friend, and as you can see, my inventory slot has just cleared itself. And indeed, the Hiker's Friend guide is here in place of my previous one. So this is Hiker's Friend, and all the books seem to start at the bottom, by the way. Um, this adds five new item types to the game, which you can use to make your survival experience easier. There is the sleeping bag. People have asked for this forever, so it's fun that it comes in the form of an add-on. Uh, there is the lantern. Then there is the camping chair, the ice pick, and then the walking stick. So th this seems fairly simple. I think this is honestly the worst way they could have shown the information. I think this is why a guidebook that is done purely in text is kind of questionable. But still, it sounds exciting to have an ice pick, to have a camping chair, a lantern, and a sleeping bag. So let's go ahead and let's let's try it. This is my brown bed, and now I will turn it into a sleeping bag. It's a bit of an odd recipe to just say bed equals sleeping bag now. But again, this is all about making things easy. This is a free add-on, so I'm, I'm not going to complain too much. But what I am going to do is I'm going to make myself some sticks. I need those for a lot of recipes, like this chair. Ooh, that feels weird, but it's nice that they come in different colors. And also including things like, uh, I, I, be I believe if you want a lantern, that's a walking stick. What could this possibly be used for? So yeah, I don't hate the hiker's walking stick recipe. I don't think the hiker's ice pick recipe is too bad either. But the one that I would have to criticize is the lantern for sure. You craft a regular lantern and then that is used to make your handheld lantern. How would the iron be used just to, you know, it doesn't doesn't feel quite right to me. I feel like this with some wood or some sticks above it or something like that. But, but we'll make it for now. Let's go ahead. Let's take our iron. Put it in there, make it into some, some nuggets so that we can make a regular lantern so that we can use that regular lantern and some iron to make a handheld lantern. Uh, lantern. Here are my five things that make this a hiker's paradise. I mean, it's not called that, but it's it's the new name I'm calling it. So um, yeah, the hiker's friend uh, is a really interesting collection of stuff. But does it actually help in any meaningful way? I think five items feels very low, but if they're five good items, this could be a good base to add other things on top of. So first things first, let's use the sleeping bag, which if I understand correctly, just based on the idea people have had forever, is that you should be able to sleep without setting your spawn point. Something I assume we can do. Oh, that was weird. I like that sleeping animation. Honestly, pretty decent. It's a... Uh, uh, a, a decent enough item by itself. Then we've got the camping chair, which I assume you just sit in. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? You know, there's so many furniture packs in the world, and I never understand any of them. Like, sitting in a chair is not something that I think should define a pack, but that's fine. The ice pick sounds interesting because supposedly it allows you to climb buildings. So here is a big scalable building in my world. Let's do it. Oh, okay, I don't... I don't fully understand this, but here we go. We're climbing a mountain. <laughs> We're climbing a wall, which in this case doesn't make too much sense because it's a man-made wall. But the idea that you could climb mountains of this actually is a hiker's friend. That is something I think is very useful. And being able to climb up a building like that, actually very fun. Then we've got the walker's stick. So this is a stick that would allow you to walk. Looking at it, it looks like it might be decorative because I cannot work out what the use is. I'm trying right-clicking, left-clicking... I don't know if this does anything, actually. I'll try it on grass, maybe? Nope. This, uh, so the walking stick is purely aesthetic? Maybe? That can't be true. They, you wouldn't add five items to an add-on and one of them is purely aesthetic. And it's just a stick. We already had sticks in Minecraft. <laughs> and then we've got the handheld lantern. So this one is interesting to me. I've only seen this 
uh, from uh, footage. In fact, some of those being used in this video. But this is meant to be one of the most requested features in Minecraft ever. It's meant to be the ability to see in the dark. So we're going to go into a cave to truly test this. Because as you can see, I can turn it on or off now. But if we find a nice dark spot, and you better believe I just have, well, now we have the ability to have a handheld lantern. So this is actually incredibly cool. It follows you around. And this is exactly what I think add-ons are made for. The sort of feature that Minecraft isn't going to add themselves. They don't think they can add thematically or on a game engine level, but also uh, that an add-on creator can add. And in case you're looking at this and saying, wait a minute, didn't Mojang make a real big point about how it couldn't work in their game engine? It would take too much performance up. Aren't you just walking through a cave with no issue right now? Well, I'm sure you can see the kind of, uh, I wouldn't say the hack to this, but the way this is being calculated. Um, basically, every time you move block is when this is changing. And so it doesn't look very smooth at all. Also, it goes out temporarily all sorts of random times. Um, I do think this is more than enough for most people. It satisfies the itch. But this isn't a perfectly made Minecraft feature. This is clearly made by some person. And, you know, no offense to Razzlebury. I, I think this is, uh, you know, really cool that you made this for free. They are not being compensated for this, I don't assume. And so the fact that this is out there, very, very wonderful. But if you were to look at this as something that you were going to pay for, I think that would be questionable. By the way, in case you're curious, I went through and I worked out. You can spend over $40 just on the add-ons that came out day one, ignoring ones that might come out later. So, uh, yeah, it'd be really crazy to try and go for all of those. Uh, but for, for this particular add-on, I'm going to say this is a 5 out of 10. It's perfectly serviceable, but you would want it solely for the sleeping bag. And even then, how much extra use do you actually get out of this to install an add-on and disable achievements? You would use this just for the sleeping bag, maybe for the ice pick I could see. Look, it's a ravine getting out of tool, sort of, or I guess for things like this where you've nerd pulled up before. Um, it, it can be really useful for certain situations, so I'm not going to downplay it too much there. I wouldn't say the camping chair is worthwhile or the walking stick, and I think that uh, the lantern is the, is the real killer feature here. It's effectively the lantern pack with a few other bonus features if you want them. Yeah, I would be genuinely upset if I paid for, <laughs> for the add-on and got this, but you know, for free, I'm perfectly fine with it. Speaking of things I'm perfectly fine with, let's get out there and see if we can download an add-on to help in this situation. So the next highest rated free add-on is called the Dragonfire Light, and this is interesting because it's the only add-on available right now where there is a free and a paid version of the exact same content, i.e. you can uh, download it in its uh, current form, uh, which is the free one, or you'll probably get some more features in the paid one. What is the difference? Well, let's find out the basics. By the way, yeah, I, <laughs> something about this feels like it could be a really good model going forwards, or it could be a way to get lazy free versions of things. We'll find out as we scroll to the top of what you get. So this has dragons that will spawn naturally across all biomes. Keep an eye out for unique looking wandering traders, and they will be found in uh, eggs, hatchlings, and adults. Adult dragons can be tamed like horses. Well, that sounds interesting. By the way, just to give some extra credit to Hiker's Friend, the lantern actually works while you're not holding it as well, which I think is a really useful little part of the feature. It is effectively a third-hand lantern. Just by having it on, I assume even in your inventory, it will still work, which makes it potentially very handy for people who want to go caving. I think that does give it even more of a potential use case if you're looking for it. But yeah, I'm just looking to get out of this cave. Ah, there we go. Found it. Ah, a dragon! <laughs> I spent so long looking for them, and literally three just appeared all at the same time. You know, it's like buses, I guess, in that way. But this is the brand new feature that you can find, and they are just like horses, and that you tame them by sitting on them over and over again. Wow, that sure is fun, isn't it? Look at this, I have a dragon now. I bet he needs a saddle. I don't know where I'm going to find one. Also, he's unknown, apparently. But what I do know is you can shear a dragon. Oh, the dragon has no loose scales to shear. But if I, if he had some loose shear, uh, scales, you could shear them and you could craft new armor from it. These shards can be used to make swords, although I'm not sure I would want to if it does five damage. Let's find out if it does something fun as well as damage. Because otherwise, you can use it to make a bad stone sword. Oh, yeah, it's a stone sword that seems to slightly damage enemies a little bit afterwards, so maybe useful. Um, but you can also use it to make some armor. Is the armor worth using if you have, say, Neverite in your world, purely hypothetically there? Well, I don't actually know. According to the stats, you can see I've got s 6 out of 10 uh, things right now, and after this, I have 4.5, but presumably I have something else, and it's not just a 
pretty face. Let's find out what that is. Oh, you have to wear a full armor set to get any of the benefits, and so don't bother wearing the helmet, no matter how cool you think it looks, because it's worthless without everything else. What isn't worthless, though, is the ability to ride dragons. Again, I think what you can clearly see with just these first uh, three we've gone through right here is commonly suggested Minecraft features that aren't in Minecraft itself coming in the form of an add-on. Being able to fly a dragon around your Minecraft world is something that everyone dreams of and, you know, maybe even asks Mojang to do. But now instead of having to, like, bow to that pressure, they can just say, yeah, there's an add-on for this. I think some people would look at that and maybe cynically say, like, well, doesn't Mojang then not have an incentive to make the cool features and instead wait for add-ons? But I would argue that it means Mojang can focus on making the actual, you know, like, features that work in the base vanilla game without having to worry about the most popular ideas. Because if you play around with dragons for a few minutes, it's real, real fun. And maybe long term, this is exactly what your world needs. But I do think that Minecraft is a game that actually suffers from too much content rather than too little sometimes. And so maybe that is actually what happens if you give it a try. For now, all I want to know is what does a full set of dragon armor do? And you know how I'm gonna find that out? Yeah, you guessed it. I'm, I'm giving myself the scales so that I can go ahead and get myself a leggings, a chest plate, and a boot set, because this better be damn good, right? I mean, just, just imagine what it could do. So it counts as wearing like full iron or so, I think, a little bit stronger, a little bit less than full diamond. And, uh, oh look, we got a wandering trader. Oh look, look he's got he's got dragon wings and a helmet, but otherwise it's just a normal dude. Very funny. In case you're ever curious about how you can actually use these mods if you're going to be in creative, because let's be honest, by the time you're in add-on territory, you're already probably halfway here. Um, all you have to do is you have to go through here and you can just add a Foley Falcon, for example, uh, and then it will summon one of these, although as an egg, so in this case, maybe not perfect. But um, yeah, you can spawn and so- Oh, oh, we can make them hatch too, it seems. Oh. Hey, look at that. Look how cute he is. But yeah, long, long story short, uh, yeah, you can do that. And also, long story short, you should definitely be doing this on a copy build world one more time. Very important. It's what we're doing here today. Oh, the dragons go to sleep at night. That is absolutely adorable. I'm loving that. But do you know what else I would probably love? I think finding out what's inside the full version of this, the one that costs $5 to download, and you know what, I'm convincing myself more and more I should do the full version of this video but paid, even though it costs so much. But anyway, well, we'll for now skip ahead to the next free add-on. So interestingly, this is the first add-on not to have its whole featured book. In fact, I didn't see it for a second, but it's actually this one right here. Very classic Minecraft feeling. Feels like uh, something you downloaded from the internet, which I mean, I technically did do and it tells you about all of the different types of TNT you can make which is very very interesting what I'm gonna do is I'm going to grab some oh you gotta you've got to make ultra TNT for most of these which is made from regular TNT and ultra powder how do we make ultra powder from gunpowder and redstone dust so clearly I need to go to my gunpowder farm which conveniently enough I can do using the dragon mod it is convenient by the way because I have been using this quite a bit recently just as like a casual AFKing and need to heat the office and so it's cheaper to- Oh wow, there's a dragon in here! <laughs> it's cheaper to me to just run Minecraft and have my PC uh, create some heat than to actually run a space heater. Anyway, with that said, let's go ahead and let's grab our gunpowder. Oh, that's a lot. Let's make some nice TNT and throw some terrible things away. And then let's prove that even though I have dragons, it's actually much more efficient just to fly around everywhere because here I am now Let's throw away these weird things and let's go make some fun TNT. So this is ultra powder right here and now I'm going to use said ultra powder to make ultra TNT. Okay, seems logical. And then I can use that with anything else to make a toxic TNT or a proxy TNT or anything else if I just find the ingredients. You can see just how healing TNT, gravity TNT. Oh, implosion TNT, lucky. I think I'm just going to find the one that looks like it does the most. Colossal TNT seems like the logical one. And maybe, too, we could have some fun with some of the other ones here. But I think we're just going to start with regular TNT, Ultra TNT, work into Colossal TNT. With maybe a little stop along the way for Toxic. So I'm going to be honest, I'm going to take full advantage of the fact that this is a copy of my world to show you what TNT does to a stone building. The answer is actually surprisingly little. If it's not dirt, you barely make a dent with regular TNT. Oh. You literally don't make a dent with regular TNT, um, which means that you need to kind of explode it somewhere like this 
to really enjoy the fruits. You get like a creeper style explosion that makes you go, oh, look at that. But imagine if you had, say, toxic TNT. Well, what would that do? Well, I'm going to find out. Uh, you can't actually place the bun on the TNT and it doesn't seem to detonate the same way. Oh, do you have to punch it? No, it, you can you can get it back when you do that. Oh, what just happened there? Oh, the, okay, so the TNT immediately broke itself. I'm very confused by what is happening with this, actually. Huh, I guess I have to read the book. You know what, I'm gonna be honest with you, it mentions nothing about not working when pressed by a button. So we'll just leave that there and detonate it using a rocket TNT, which I'm guessing will fly in the direction I launch it, so. Oh, this also doesn't work. Oh, I guess we'll go grab a flint and steel, it's fine. I've gotta admit, it feels like a bit of an oversight not to consider that sometimes redstone is the activation for TNT. But let's just do it anyway. Let's launch this. Oh, okay, that's fun. Oh, that's really fun. Wow. Do you think that would have like been big if it had activated elsewhere? This is toxic TNT. Is it gonna be bigger or smaller? Oh, there's a big poison cloud, which gives you poison when you go into it. So it's a lingering potion mixed with TNT. It's a nuclear bomb, if you will. Um, and then we've got proxy TNT, so that can be detonated from a distance, one assumes. Oh, let's find out. It looks like it's just lots of TNT, like a cluster bomb almost. Yep, it's a cluster bomb. Oh no, don't come towards me, cluster bomb. Okay, well that was fun. However, despite seeing the craziness that that caused, it was fairly small, all things considered. Let's go ahead and let's try the colossal TNT on the bank of Toy Cat. So bear in mind that everything we've done so far has made this much of a dent. What about the colossal TNT, let's say placed right inside of the uh, of the vault on inside, right? Let's let's say you were to do that. Oh my god, it's ridiculously large. But let's say you were to place it right inside the vault. Well, um, oh no, I'm not gonna make it out of this alive, am I? Okay, so I'm just gonna flee. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, it's got a long fuse. Let's go. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Oh my god. So it goes a little bit without saying, but fun fact, Colossal TNT will make a very big explosion. Wow, oh my god, it's so much deeper than I imagined. You can literally, that is the way to find where my vault is. If you've got Colossal TNT and a copy of the Let's Play World, there are no more secrets anymore. <laughs> Even my banners are right at the brink of destruction. That is fascinating. I wanna do it again. Okay, this might be my silliest idea yet, but I really just need to know. And so I'm going to do precisely that. I I don't know what I'm expecting to survive at this point, um, but I do know I'm expecting to have a very fun time when all of this is said and done. So let's detonate it and then let's, uh, I know, enjoy the view from up here. Assuming we can even do that. So I'm up here now. Uh, have the explosion started? Not yet, okay. So, I might not live from here. Well, I should have maybe seen that coming. <laughs> Let's see if we live from here. So, my house is still doing just about fine, which is nice. Um, but the same can't be said for the rest of my world. Oh, yeah, no, not, not doing great. We're going to have to... <laughs> oh, no, my chickens. <laughs> so, I don't know if the game knows where I have to respawn yet, because my house might not be alive by the time that I do. Oh... Okay, I think we crashed Minecraft. It's hard to do that on the Bedrock version. To give credit, didn't know you could do it to be- Oh! <laughs> I'm alive, somehow. I don't know where I am, or what I am, but I am- I am in a cave system that I didn't know existed below my house. So that's fun. I'm dead, but the you're dead screen hasn't popped up yet. I've never, I've never seen the game lag like this. This is, uh, this is impressive, right? This is genuinely impressive. So as the TNT did to my world, I'm going to level with you right now and say, I think that this is the most insane add-on you can get. And it's a 10 out of 10 for me. Because this is something everyone dreams of in an add-on. You would only use this on a creative world or on a copy of a world. But that's exactly what the add-ons are there for. And so, after, you know, like, uh, this is, this is genius. You ever wanted to see my world destroyed? Ultra TNT, Colossal TNT are the way to do so. I don't, I can't even tell you what this used to be. 
I know this world like the back of my hand. And when it's this destroyed, I don't know anything. Oh, okay. So the Let's Play house in the basement of my Let's Play house actually, funnily enough, survived all of that just fine. So just remember, if you ever want to survive a nuclear explosion, build a house in your basement and then go live in that house after the explosion, as I'm going to do right now. <laughs> So this next book is a little bit heftier than the more TNT one on the surface, but in reality it is literally six six lines. It just says, when you die, a gravestone appears at your death, guarding your items, and you just gotta use the gravestone finder to find it. It's basically the respawn compass but buffed, and it's especially handy if your world happens to look like this. Oh man, there is no sign of my house besides the ender chest up there, huh? But yeah, I'm gonna now uh, recreate uh, one of these so we can see what the death stone is looking like. That's what it is like there. Let's see if we can't get our way down there. So this is a gravestone finder and it says 42 blocks north, 40 blocks north, 39 blocks north, 30, wait, is this not north? Okay, I, I don't know which direction it is. Oh, maybe it's saying it's north, but also it's, okay, so we go down. Is it getting closer? <laughs> it's not a very useful locator. I think this is a worse version of the respawn compass. They should have just given you a respawn compass when you died, maybe. I don't know if they could do that. But whatever this is, is a much more confusing system. Okay, I'm swimming away from it right now. And so this is my gravestone, which I can presumably break, and I get all of my items back, meaning I have two copies of more TNT, and indeed I can work out how this add-on works again. Uh, by the way, I should also just give some credit to uh, all of these people who helped to make it. But to be clear, even though I think this is pretty handy, it's the most single purpose to all of them and so you either, you either really want it or you don't but I also don't think I can rate it like a 10 out of 10 because it's great at what it does oh actually it's bad ish at one of the two things it does it's worse than a vanilla feature at one of the two things it does and so I think a 5 out of 10 is fair nothing bad against it it's just the least featured of the free ones but that might make it the most easy to add to another add-on if you wanted to do so also what happens if you die in lava do you think you still get a gravestone the answer is yes. How does that work? Ah, there's a dragon in here. <laughs> Very easy to combine, like I said. So eight blocks away, I've got a gravestone and I'm gonna find it. Seven blocks away, six blocks away, five blocks away. I don't know how I could possibly have a gravestone. Um, yeah, so you get gravestones even when you probably shouldn't. And you can break them, but that was probably a bad idea. So pro tip, you, you can prevent your loss of your stuff. It's basically keep inventory, but for survival, but with a bit more of a challenge than keep inventory. I like that. So next up, we need to talk about All the Wool. This is an add-on I played in my video announcing that the add-ons had come to Minecraft. So you might have seen me play this already, but basically it is the ability to play with more wool colors than you could before. Pretty fun if you ask me. You can make some basic furniture. You can make balloons. You can make some rainbow wool. It's like you sheared a Jeb sheep. It's a lot of the things you probably dreamed of if you like playing around with wool. And again, it's semi-single focus. I think it's a solid eight out of 10 or something. Uh, but I wouldn't say it's the very best add-on in the world. I would say it's very useful if you're looking for a bit of furniture. However, maybe instead you'd prefer another furniture add-on, which is interesting because this is one of the first 15 add-ons to release. So it is the only furniture add-on, but I think it's another furniture map, basically. Like, there's so many of these that exist in Minecraft, but now you can have them all in one place. And it says that it's got 20 plus pieces of furniture, but I'm looking at it now and I think like, oh, there's, there's 10 chairs, there's 15 other chairs, and then there's nine real pieces of furniture. So we're talking about maybe 11, if you push things, different pieces of furniture that you can add to your world for free. So I think this is going to be an especially useful add-on for me because I need to furnish my new home that I've decided to live in. And I might find that having a new bench in there will really help me when I'm getting attacked by zombies. The book certainly does, it seems. So yeah, let's go ahead and let's build some of these pieces of furniture. Oh wow, there's a chair in here. It looks like that's nice. I could build myself as well as a chair. Uh, maybe even some more things like Ooh, a curtain. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Ooh, I would love me a curtain in the world. Would make me feel a lot more like home uh, in this nuclear wasteland that I'm living in. But as well as a curtain, we have drawers. Ooh, we could store some things. Flower boxes. Those could go nicely out front here, couldn't they? Um, we've got lots of choices. Let's build them all. Okay, so I've used a lot of crimson wood in this. I hope we can all agree not to judge me. 
But I also hope we can all agree that as fun as some of these items might be in theory- Oh no, that was my hammer. I needed that to show you how- <laughs> As fun as some of these items might be in theory, a lot of them do have quite limited practical use. Like, I mean, curtains, this is the most I can see a block having use. Or maybe the drawers, because you want a chest or a barrel that doesn't- uh, It's like a barrel, but it doesn't attract fishermen. There are weird sorts of niche uses for these things. But at the same time, it's really not my forte. And you know, that's that's fair. A lot of people oh, this is weird, by the way. This isn't this isn't how furniture should work, in my opinion. Um, I I do think that there's probably some real great reasons uh, to do all of the can we put the books in there too? Oh we can. Okay, but I uh, I think there's real great reasons to use all of these add-ons that I've gone through today. For my personal survival experience, this last one has the least use. But I think for some people, just vanilla Minecraft, but you can build more furniture, sounds great. And, you know, the way these flower boxes works, not a concern for them. That's uh, much better than what they had before. And so for that player, sit on your chair, enjoy your book, and have a great download of what must be the best add-on for you. For me though, I'd have to rate this a 4 out of 10 because I do not like the furniture and the way it interacts is just very odd. But if you love furniture add-ons and you're willing to overlook the fact that, you know, the furniture will slowly add a little bit of lag to your world and that you can walk into it and you just want the customization and this is finally what you've been asking for, that is the value of the add-ons and really that is hopefully the value in this video. Going through every single one of the free add-ons has hopefully shown you what they're all like so you know which ones are worth your time and which ones aren't. Ultimately, that's the point of Store Saturday, and I hope you got it. Although, it's then a reminder that perhaps you'd find much more value from seeing all of the paid add-ons that exist. Uh, having five of these active on one world at once is kind of crazy. Uh, seeing all sorts of weird mobs at the same time that you're in a giant explosion hole, at the same time as always having a gravestone, at the same time as wild wall, etc, etc, gets really, really fun to stack in there, so it might be fun to eventually do that with all of the add-ons. But for now, all I can say is that I really enjoyed uh, some of these add-ons. I, I think this is a fun addition to Minecraft. I don't think this is going to be a permanent mainstay for a lot of people. I think 10% of players are going to find their equilibrium is playing with some add-on on their maybe communal realm that already had achievements turned off. But I think a lot of people are going to say, yeah, it's cool. It's something to check out. In the same way that a certain percent of Minecraft players currently buy Minecraft maps, this is a much more fun way to actually have progress from add-on to add-on. And so it might kill the idea of those maps in the first place. So that's something we'll have to see of the future of this. Uh, I will have to also say that I really need to work on finishing this underground house and so I guess that's a project for the future. For now though, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you enjoyed seeing my world blow up as much as I did apparently because I'll see you next time. Goodbye. <laughs>